Right, let's talk about cinematic shots. Ones that you can do with your drone. Basically, anywhere. These will take practice, but always put your best foot forward. Smooth movements. The tilt has to be very, very delicate. Look at that, oh my gosh. That is breathtaking. Smooth, controlled movements. That's it. Look at those crazies down there. Flying the DJI Mini 2 in what can only be described as mind-boggling, ridiculous conditions. Minus 17, 3,100 meters above sea level. Mad. Let's talk about the first one. The reverse, tilt down, reveal. We have the beautiful Matterhorn Mountain right there, but we're tilting down to reveal the calm 3,100 meter high hotel. And it's spectacular, isn't it? Now we can do this in a completely different way, the opposite way. So starting top down, we're flying forward, so right stick forward, and you're tilting up at the same time, very, very slowly, controlled, remember, controlled movements. And we're revealing this magnificent valley next to the Forker Pass. I mean, slap me silly and call me Sally, that's stunning. So remember to use the tilt reveal. It's very, very useful. Right stick, pull back, or forward if you're going in the other direction. Tilt, make sure you've got it really controlled. So right here you can see I'm slowing down and it's barely even moving up anymore. You can't even see that it's stopped. You don't want any jaggedy movements. And if you want, you can add a little bit of lift on the left stick, so push it up a tiny bit to reveal more of your landscape, get a better perspective. Anyway, let's jump in the studio and let Phil blabber on for half a minute or a minute and explain a few things about these shots, if he can. I'm gonna try and not blabber on for the whole minute. Get your controller out. And remember, my footage looks the way it does because I always have ND filters on every single time. I go out flying, except for obviously the night shots, I have an ND filter on my drone. Doesn't matter what drone it is, doesn't matter what camera it is, there is an ND filter on when I'm filming. I stick to the 180 degree rule. Take out your controller. And in a lot of these shots, I'm going to tell you where to put your fingers, okay? And there were times when my fingers were so frozen that I was filming and I wasn't, I didn't have my hand here because I just couldn't do it. And I don't pinch my sticks, you know that. So my finger was actually just here, just doing that. Can you guys see that? This, this movement right there. I wasn't here, I was doing this. And sometimes that actually works really well. So when I'm like doing my parallax shots, you know, ah. Okay, a couple of things. The footage is from a whole load of different places at different times, different sun, different darkness, everything. It is not color match, so just watch it. It's, it's, it's me basically showing you the cinematic shots that I have put together. It was very, very, very windy, so the Insta360 microphone was picking up a lot of wind, so sorry about that. You're gonna have to deal with it. And like my mum has told me, my whole life practice makes perfect practice these shots. Take out your controller, watch this film, and put your fingers where I'm telling you to put them. <laughs> your thumbs, you know what I mean. Practice it. Imagine you're flying these shots. Put your fingers in, in the, 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 there, and practice every single one of these shots. Any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. Don't flick your sticks, above all. If you did like my film, at the end of this very long film, give it a like, subscribe. I'm here to help you guys, that's what I'm here for, and I'm very happy you're all with me on this wonderful journey that YouTube is. Anyway, let's carry on watching these. These are gonna be a lot of fun, and it's very, 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 very long, so make a cup of tea, get your controller out, and watch them. Is this over a minute? Dolly, left or right? This is obviously the dolly to the right. A dolly shot is no doubt one of the simplest moves you can pull off. I'm lucky I have clouds here because you can see the movement even so far away from the subject, which is my city. 
But if you get a little bit closer with your dolly, the shot becomes a lot more dynamic as you can see right here. So by simply flying left or right, you can reveal your subject, you can fly past your subject, and you can even fly diagonally, like I'm doing here. So this is my right stick in the right hand side corner. So I'm flying forward and right at the same time, just with my right thumb. It's, it's a nice simple shot. Try to remember it. Good thing these birds are here, because this is almost a tripod shot without them. This shot, this top-down shot would be boring. You need movement in your frame if you have a top-down shot. Otherwise the viewer will just be completely bored by what you're showing them. If though, you move your stick, for example, this is my right stick moving diagonally left, it creates a very odd frame. This is my right stick moving to the right. And this is my right stick moving to the left. So you've got a top-down shot, but you're moving. It's, it's quite interesting. You can also use your left stick like here and pull down to zoom in. So you're getting closer to the ground. Or you can add a bit of spin. So that adds a little bit of uncertainty to the image. It's very odd, weird. Adding motion to your top-down shot, like a spin or a dolly left or right, will make it a little bit more interesting if there isn't much going on in your frame, like here. And it will add that extra kind of level, that finesse you're looking for. Right, there are like choppers all around. I mean, can you hear that? There is a, like a chopper somewhere around here and they come through valleys and you have no idea where they are so it's a little bit stressful flying around here but today's yeah can you guys see that oh shit look out holy now i had my drone in the air about that height about one minute ago and um yeah, it's, it's freaky out here, so you got to be really careful. This is a green fly zone, so we are allowed to fly here, especially with the Mavic Mini 2, but... <laughs> I think he did that just to, you know, to let us know he's here. I love a good flyby, and you guys know very well I'm not a Google Maps pilot. I like being down low, I like flying through things. It's the meat in the sandwich. It's what binds your shots together, showing the viewer everything close up. So flying through a tree, being close to the ground. That's so important because a lot of us, we're 100 meters up in the air, 200 meters up in the air. But if you show them a shot like this, we are flying through the trees. They're really close, almost too close. And you're revealing the beautiful cityscape behind it. Now that's... That's incredible. You're joining two things together. Flying through things is just so dynamic. You have everything flying by on the right, on the left. It's, it's, it's a lot more interesting than being 500 meters up in the air. And you can also give someone a bit of a heart attack like here. I think I might have touched that snow flying by it, but it's worth it. It's, it is the meat in the sandwich. This may not be as extremely dangerous as the last few shots but it's still it's simple i'm flying through something to give the viewer an idea of what it looks like down here not just up there and that's what you can use the drone for up we go let's be honest about this one a monkey could do it on your left stick press up tilt very slowly down as you're going up you're going to have to tilt a little bit to keep that horizon level just going to show you one because it's simple. Let's move on to the next. This is the Parallax Orbit Reveal. It's a classic Hollywood shot you'd probably need a helicopter for. Oh. But we're going to do it with the DJI Mini 2 in 30 mile an hour winds. That's fast. Looking down at the hotel, we're spinning around it like a madman, tilting up at the same time to reveal the beautiful mountainscape behind it covered in ice frozen solid 
the orbit reveal with a tilt up is something stunning because we see the ground below we spin around and we see the sky above it's amazing the hardest bit is smoothing out at the very end especially when your fingers are frozen solid oh wow the way i do it is i pull back on the right stick a little bit a little bit to the right not too far my left stick I'm pulling to the left a tiny bit just to keep that hotel in the middle as I'm orbiting and I'm tilting up as you can see but not too much so I don't cut the bottom of the hotel off. Once you've mastered this shot you're basically king of the skies. King of the skies. So let's reverse this mofo. A parallax orbit reveal backwards. I have the stunning mountainscape in the background, the hotel in the middle. My right stick is very, very strongly stuck in the right hand side, top right hand side corner. My left stick is holding left and down a little as I am descending, getting lower and lower and trying to keep the hotel in the frame. I'm also tilting down ever so much, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And this shot wasn't easy, 3,400 meters in the sky, 60 mile an hour gusts, 40 mile an hour winds. This was in normal mode as sports mode was hiding my gimbal every two seconds. This was a battle. This was a serious battle between me, the Mini and this shot. But I really wanted it. This was the third try. And I feel, I feel I nailed it. I did. King of the skies. King of the skies. King of the... Flying forward. No doubt the oldest trick in the book. It's very basic. Right stick, push it forward. An incredibly underestimated shot. Very simple, but it's got a lot of power. It's got a lot of movement. You're you're constantly flying forward. The perspective is changing. It's very beautiful. That's five kilometers we walked up to get to the dam, by the way. It's good if you have something very close to you as you're flying forward. Just so the perspective changes, so you can do a small reveal, so you get some dynamic change in the frame. Simple, huh? This is almost identical to the last one, except I have my right stick forward and my left stick forward, both maxed out. I'm flying up to that dam, which you can see is quite a climb. For the Mini 2, it's, um, it wasn't easy, but I wanted to reach that dam and we'd walked about six kilometers. We decided we weren't going any further. As I get to the top of this dam, I'm using my tilt wheel right about now to start delicately tilting down so that I can get that mountain top in the rule of thirds and everything will look nice and sexy. This is a forward ascend tilt down. It's pretty simple too, but effective. So let's go back and by that I mean right stick backwards so to you fly backwards nothing else and all you're doing is revealing your landscape as you fly backwards it's quite an interesting shot because you're constantly surprising someone with what's behind you behind your camera it's a dope one definitely simple now the chase so your very classic simple follow shot this is easy if you have an air 2 or a mavic 2 pro but we're doing it with a mini too. So you're following, you're chasing your subject, you're trying to keep it in frame. You've got to be very, very smooth on the sticks. Here, I've got my right stick forward and I'm tilting down and I am turning my left stick a little bit to the right just to keep that boat in frame. Top 
Top down can be a follow mode as well. It looks pretty damn cool. And the waves looks like velvet in the wind. Saying I can't get better, I promise they all lying on my car for this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, look, I think it's time you start using your common sense. Everybody watch out, cause the bomb is lit. I got that. Uh, 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 uh. So, this is me up on a hill behind the hotel doing a manual parallax spin around the hotel and I gotta tell you I was pretty close to the hotel as you're gonna see in a minute it's not easy what is he oh yeah okay I know what he's doing it's not easy to parallax manually around a hotel quite close to it but you'll see in a minute that it is possible even with ridiculously frozen fingers it's possible so we just handled a beautiful spin and that was actually really nice. It did a nice spin, so I'll include that one in the video for you guys. This is a parallax spin around the hotel 3,100 meters above sea level using the DJI Mini 2. The Mini 2. It's possible. Oh yeah, it's possible. He danced with that drone about 10 times before it calibrated. Oof. This is another parallax. As you can see, the mountain behind the hotel is moving. Right stick to the right, left stick to the left, and I'm spinning. The closer your thumbs get to the middle, so 3pm and 9pm, the tighter the shot. Here I was probably at about 2pm and 10pm. If you can pull off these parallax shots and get them really nice and smooth, so you've got the, the foreground right in the middle and the background is spinning around, boom, Michael Bay is going to be on the phone in no time at all. These are epic shots epic shots and with a bit of practice parallax shots pff, you're going to be spinning them around like a record baby like a record you just got to make sure you're smoothing it out at the end Smooth. what i want to say here at the very end is fortune favors the brave mix it up top down tilt fly forward fly backwards spin it around go down say you have a subject at the very bottom you're looking down at them you're showing the landscape and then you descend right to their level and then boom you've got your subject in shot Fortune favours the brave. It's true. I wouldn't have got a ton of the shots that I have. Flying drones if I wouldn't have been brave. Sure, there's a fine line between being brave and stupid, but 99% of the time it paid off. Go get your shot, guys. Go get your shot. I'd also like to say thanks for being with me. The support I get from everybody is incredible. Let's go fly. Let's go fly.